And thank you very much to the Australian Marketing Institute for inviting me over here again. I was here this time last year. So John Sembo in particular, I think this seems to me a bit like a triumph of optimism over really common sense, but we shall see. Now, of course, taking a cue from advertising before the main programme, a bit of a commercial if you don't mind. Uh, I'm the editor of Directory magazine, and Directory uh, features 40 case histories uh, every quarter in what is essentially a book, really. Uh, as you can tell, I was probably, uh, I was once upon a time the creative director of an advertising agency, so there we have the advertising promise, the Bible of creativity, you know? And with that thought, the Bible of creativity is the idea that inside all of these pages, 104 pages every quarter, there's wisdom and the stories of incredible marketing miracles. So that's my advertising background. Then I moved into direct marketing and suddenly the nature of the offer changes. It's now about, you know, not so much promise, but the offer. So buy my magazine, you bastards. You know, to coin a phrase I borrowed from the Australian Meat Commission. Uh, and there's a special offer to anyone in the room today of 25% off. Um, I brought a number of them with me. They're extremely heavy, by the way. Uh, so I'm very, very glad to offload these. And if anyone wants to take a free copy at the end of uh, this session, please do that. It's bloody expensive. Uh, it's 600 quid, or well, in this case, 450 pounds for a subscription, but you get a lot in it. You get four magazines a year, five passwords to the online archive, which is now 500 case history plus, uh, with all the videos and the hiring images, and on top of that, you get the monthly newsletter. So that's it, and the whole business of building relationships. So I want to talk about love, Romeo and Juliet, and the love uh, some people have for brands, and actually, to coin Kevin Roberts, uh, how brands really ought to start loving in return, especially if they want to prosper and survive in extremely difficult uh, circumstances right now. Now, when I started in advertising uh, a long time ago at a place called BNP, uh, we used to take quite a lot of interest in the tarp cards that were left in London phone boxes. And even then, 30 years ago, they taught us an awful lot about the way advertising works. I used to work with a guy called John Steele in those days, and uh, as I say, we used to collect these cards. He's written about the experiences we had in a brilliant book called Perfect Pitch. But what was really fantastic about these is that actually most of the tarp cards we saw were direct marketing at its purest. So here, for example, we have uh, Veronica. This is German. She's startling. And it's a simple transactional offer. You know, in return for money, services will be granted. So uh, we had Varushka over here. And what's really interesting about both of these is that actually uh, the offer is absolutely straight up front and it's transaction. What both of these advertisers are trying to do is to tell you that you will not be making a mistake in buying either of them. No particular promise here, just a proposition. In return for your money, you will get it. But then we came across one particular card that was really interesting. Now here is a promise. What you see is what you get. And the really interesting thing about Helen is that suddenly she changed the entire market. Because suddenly I'm looking at Varushka thinking, I bet she looks like a Russian shop putter, you know? <laughs> and she's not like that at all, because Helen has now told me something about all of those services. But perhaps the most amazing one of them all, uh, with real promise behind it, was just a post-it note that we found in one of the phone boxes once, and it said, I really love my job, Amanda. Thanks. Uh, now the interesting thing about all of that is that I believe that all of those tarp cards are about a transactional relationship, no more and no less. None of those girls want a lasting relationship. No loyalty points offered. And so my contention today is that most direct marketers are, are in the same cape of wham bam and thank you man. And yet it's no longer appropriate. And I think that's a tragedy. You know, because I think a lot of direct marketers are not only ignoring the opportunities to use direct marketing to strengthen relationships, but actually in some cases they may be really damaging them. So let's have a kind of look at the way relationships begin. The relationships begin with brands. 
They start with advertising. So here was a lady who put an ad in looking for love. Uh, fascinating. She wrote a book about her experiences. And um, she was rather hurt that nobody asked her to marry them. But actually, she wasn't looking for love. She's absolutely dead straightforward. This is about sex. So advertising is where you can start building a relationship. Then, of course, there's sales promotional. You throw a party. And certainly in my singleton days, I used to throw a lot of parties just in case somebody got so drunk they stayed over. <laughs> Never they did. But you can use other forms of guerrilla communication these days. And then you hope that perhaps you're getting a name. Once you've got a name, then of course what you can do is you can write to your you can write to your intended, you know, am I made of wood? I've seen you from afar, and so forth. And now, interestingly, these days, you can also use online uh, in new and really surprising ways. And this is a, a little love story from Italy with young Giovanni. Siamo Giovanni e volevo chiederti una mano, perché questa mattina ho incontrato la mia vicina Gaia, quella che sta al piano sopra, al piano di sopra. In sostanza, io ho chiesto un sacco di volte di uscire e mi ha detto che finalmente, se 50.000 di voi glielo chiederanno, Dà un bacio. Dà un bacio, io ho detto guarda, se non chiedere 50.000 va bene, ok? Il problema è che ho fatto veramente, cioè stanno arrivando un sacco di mail, sono arrivate 20.000 più o meno, 20.000 mail da bacio, 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 non sono distrata. 20.000 mail, io devo ringraziarvi tutti. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that actually the way relationships start, the way relationships play themselves out now, you know, if you're a brand, have completely changed. You know, from actually putting messages in front of people, now what we have to do is engage in conversations. So I'll give you a kind of a little example of what I mean. Um, again, let's take a look at sex for a moment. Here's the Swedish government. Uh, trying to persuade people in uh, Sweden that actually Romeo should really wear a condom. So the relationship, as I said before, begins with advertising. Uh, ads went out just saying this summer we're giving away a whole load of free condoms. Each one is numbered. And what we want to do is to hear your story, or your condom story. And so uh, then a bit of sales promotion, uh, brand activation in different uh, places where young people congregate. They were handed out condoms, they were told what the story was. Uh, if they expressed an interest online, then uh, direct mail was sent out to them, sending them their numbered condom, and actually uh, asking them, telling them what to do, which is every condom has a story to celebrate every time someone rolls on a rubber, we're handing out 100,000. Number of condoms. And we're opening a blog for people's own stories about who does what to whom this summer. So please feel free to kiss and tell. So, of course, as I said before, other forms of one to one uh, communication, and so condoms were left in public places for people to take them off. And then the stories began to come in. And so, uh, all the number of condoms, uh, literally thousands of people went to the website and started blogging. Some of them, I'm not sure we're telling the entire truth, but there we go. And then what happens, of course, is it starts a whole series of un other conversations. Now, behind this, there's actually a really, really serious message. But the way they've communicated this has not been sequential at all. It's capturing different people at different times. So here's another little example. In this uh, instance in Beirut, uh, a florist, <coughs> was trying to sell love. And not only trying to sell love, and I think this is the really interesting thing, trying to change attitudes, trying to change behavior. And the thing about direct marketing, it seems to me that actually if all you try and do is build a sales spike, what you're doing is missing an opportunity to do something much bigger. So Exotica is a florist in Beirut, and 
Uh, essentially, the real problem in Beirut is that there are six girls to every male. And the males all behave like kind of male chauvinists uh, uh, do. And uh, so they created a blog site of somebody called Ivy. And Ivy started blogging about what it's like to be a young woman in Beirut. And she started blogging about how it was time girls took the initiative because guys were just completely pathetic about it. And actually, more and more women were waiting longer and longer and longer for guys to get off their asses. So, I started blogging about this, and she said that women uh, had a number of rights. And the first right they had was that they had the right to make the first move. So, Exotic and I took this idea, and they started printing it into leaflets, which were then distributed uh, around Lebanon. Girls saying, we have a number of rights, and the first is that we can chat up guys. We don't have to wait for them. And then, because this is a florist shop, they got girls to go around the streets of Beirut handing out roses, uh, handing out roses to girls. Now, the interesting thing about these roses, they're all different colors. And what they said to the girls is, girls, give the guys you know a rose, you know? But give them a rose of a particular color. And so as the girls handed them over, they said to the guys, you've got to go to our, uh, to our website, the exotical website, to work out what these flowers mean, the language of flowers. So guys were then driven to the exotic website where they could discover what the color of their particular flower that they'd been given meant. So what it meant was, you know, stop hanging around, you know, let's get started. There were a whole series of kind of messages from, from girls there. While they were on the website, of course, guys could do the decent thing and buy their girl or buy the girl some proper roses or a nice and red colour. Now, the point about this is that sales for St. Valentine's Day were 21% higher than they did the year before. But the really important thing is actually this was a marketer who had given a lot away in order to get given back. It wasn't just purely transactional. What it was was an idea about people and about social behavior. And that's what I think the really fascinating thing about direct marketing right now is that you can use media combined in such a way to change the way people think, let alone what they do. Now, Romeo and Juliet were assured by Shakespeare and the scholars were probably 15 and 16 years old at the time of the play. And actually, young people are really uh, interesting to talk about. Uh, about because, especially in the context of mail, because young people don't get mail. And when they get anything through the post, it's fantastic. <laughs> and that little insight led uh, the Royal uh, National Lifeboat Institution in the UK uh, to create an incredibly uh, successful campaign that really shifted attitudes and got people talking. Now, if you're the RNLI, you're a charity. You're a charity that exists in a country where uh, seven-eighths of the population do not live near the sea, so you have no idea what they mean, what they do. They mean they're completely irrelevant to you. You know, the fact that they save lives of people at sea, it means nothing. Similarly, like a lot of charities, the younger you are, the less you mean to people. So what they did is they sent out to uh, 12 uh, uh, video bloggers, regular video, they sent them a letter. And they sent them parcels, said this entire campaign just started with a letter. And basically, the letter said, young people like you are basically written off by the media. You're written off as being irresponsible, feckless, knife-wielding hoodies. You know, we're frightened of you because absolutely you're crap. Now, these letters then went on to say, are you going to take this on the chin? You know, how do you feel about this? Why don't you, as really influential video bloggers, actually start taking a stand? and get young people to start talking about themselves and what they do and why they do it. So they got them to open these parcels on their video blogs. So I go back from Portugal and I have one of those things saying, you have a package to be delivered. So I thought, I didn't order anything off the internet. This is very strange. Yeah, as you can see, uh, it's addressed to Charlie so cool Life, so I'm guessing it's got something to do with YouTube. <laughs> Uh, okay, Phil, so I think this is one of the mystery packages that other people have been getting. A bunch of UK YouTubers have been sent these packages. And it seems that I've got one myself. Okay, so I'm really excited to find out what it is, so I'm going to open it now. There we go. 